No other high fleet has been documented to possess the aggressive nature and swift evolution like high fleet Gorgon. Its broods have been observed to hyper-adapt even between one battle to the next, outwitting and outpacing even the strongest of their prey. In this video we'll be showing you how to batch paint your termagants in the colours of High Fleet Gorgon. For this video I'll be painting three, but you can paint as many as you want in one sitting. Batch painting means painting a group of miniatures at the same time, great for larger units like termagants. This means we'll be painting as efficiently as possible to get your hordes on the gaming table ready to devour your enemies in no time at all. You can even use this guide on the rest of your Tyranid army. If you're new to painting, you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn all about paints and techniques. The paints we've used are on the screen right now, and remember that we're painting to match the box art, but you can paint your models however you like. Any additional equipment we've used is also on the screen, but feel free to use whatever brushes you're most comfortable with. The first thing we need to do is undercoat our models, and for this colour scheme we've used Death Guard Green. This colour is great for the more natural green tones of the skin. We'll start by base coating the body with Death Guard Green, using a large base brush. Just to get all the paint applied quicker, but also with some precision. To get the solid colour that we're after, we only need to apply a few thin coats, as the spray undercoats a slightly different finish. By applying a coat to each model in turn, this ensures we don't miss any models, and they all have plenty of time to dry. You can be messy at this stage, as we'll be painting with lots of other colours. After that first colour is dry, we'll move on to Bugman's Glow, for the membranes, joints and gun piping. Just like with Death Guard Green, we want to thin down our paint and apply it with a smaller brush. This is so we are as neat as possible and don't make any mistakes. We'll just need a few thin coats, so work in a production line, just like we did for the base coat. Next we'll paint the carapace armour with two to three thin coats of Morgast bone. As we have a few colours on our model now, a small base brush will be the best size to cover these armour plates, and keep those other details safe from mistakes. But if we do make any mistakes, that's okay, we just tidy up with the colours that we've already used. With those first colours down, our termagants are looking really great, and they are ready for a shade of Mortarian grime. We'll use this for the Death Guard Green, Morgast Bone and Bugman's Glow details, but you can apply this all over if it saves you time, as we have more colours to apply after this. Just be careful how much you apply though, as we don't want it to pull too heavily in the recesses, we just want to add a light shade to give some depth. By the time that you shaded your last model, the first one should almost be dry, you can even touch up any areas that might be too heavily shaded. And if you want to add a quick extra detail, we can dry brush the whole model with Screaming Skull. We'll do this step now, as we don't want to get this paint on the next colours. This brings out all of those raised edges, giving our model even more depth and character. Just be gentle when dry brushing, as we want a light layer on top of the model, but nothing too heavy or it look too dusty or streaky. Just remember to keep the brush moving in circular and directional movements, and don't be too heavy handed. Then to make that carapace armour stand out a little bit more, we can add a choppy highlight to make those plates look even more like bone. You don't have to do this extra step if you don't want to, as the dry brush will pick out a lot of those details. Now we'll use Abaddon Black for the guns, hooves, claws, eye sockets and the inside of the mouth. Try and be a little bit neater here, as a lot of those details are near the green body, so use a small layer brush to get into those small gaps especially the mouth. One coat should be enough to fully cover over any of the previous colours, but you can always apply a second coat if you wish. And you can always tidy up with some Death Guard Green if you make a mistake. With the black dry, we'll quickly and easily highlight those claws, hooves and gun with Dawnstone. By picking out the most prominent and visible edges and details, we don't have to worry about the areas we won't be able to see. You can also use this colour for the teeth as well, or you could use more gas bone for a more sinister look. With that highlight dry, we can paint the tongue with demonette hide. This detail will take no time at all, but we don't want to rush it, or we'll get this paint on the teeth we just painted. 
Leaving a small area of Abaddon black at the back of the mouth can add some depth to this model, so don't feel like you have to paint all of the details. Finally, we can apply Avalon Sunset on the eyes, including the ones on the gun. Just a few thin coats will cover these tiny details, with a small layer brush in no time at all. You can also tidy up around the eye sockets with Death Guard Green and Abaddon Black if you need to afterwards. And there we are, your Gorgon Termagants are now finished. These green monstrosities are ready to feast on their prey with no remorse. You can see that our models are based using Sterling Battlemire, and if you'd like to learn more about technical paints, you can check out our video all about them. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, check out citadelcolor.com, or head to your local Warhammer store, where our amazing staff will be happy to help. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!